Welcome to this session on theories of change and the land justice movement. Um, my name's Catherine. I'm going to be one of your facilitators today, along with Alice, and we'll introduce ourselves in a little while. But I just really want to welcome you into this space. For many of us, it might be the first thing we're doing this year. Um, we may have hoped to be in person, but we're showing up on Zoom uh, anyway. We're still here and we're still together. Um, so yeah, really welcome. Welcome to all of you. Um, and I'm going to spend a bit of time now welcoming in the many parts of ourselves. And um, if you want to keep your eyes open for this, you're welcome. If you feel like closing your eyes and just letting it wash over you, that's also welcome. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to start by welcoming in people of all genders, whether you're female, male, a trans person, someone who's non-binary, genderqueer, someone who none of these labels fit for. Uh, I'm going to welcome in people of African descent, people of Asian descent, people of Arab descent, and people who are Hispanic or Latinx, people of European descent, people of mixed and multiple descents. Welcome. I want to welcome in the languages that are spoken here. Welsh, English, French, Portuguese, Spanish. I'm sure there are many more. Feel free to add them in the chat if you've got a language that you speak that you'd like us to welcome in today. I want to welcome the people that live in cities, the people who live in towns, the people who live in villages, the people who live in the countryside, and those of us who move between places. Welcome. I want to welcome people with disabilities, both visible and invisible. People who are gay, lesbian, bisexual, pansexual, queer, and those of us for whom none of these labels fit. Welcome. I want to welcome in your bodies and however you feel in yours, whether you experience chronic pain, tension, whether you're feeling really strong today welcoming in your bodies into this space. I want to welcome in survivors. Welcome. I want to welcome in people who identify as part of the land justice movement and people who don't. It's great to have you here. People who are single, who are married, who are partnered or divorced, dating in monogamous or polyamorous relationships. Welcome. To those of you in your teens, your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, more in the chat if you're in your 90s and older, welcome. And also welcome in the children. I can see a few on the screen. It's really great to have the young ones here with us today. I wanna to welcome in your emotions, joy, bliss, grief, rage, disappointment, contentment, whatever they are, welcome. Also want to welcome and honour the people who support you to be here today, uh, whoever they might be, and welcoming in your families, genetic or otherwise. Also want to welcome in people of faith, of different faiths, people of different religious traditions, spiritual practices, private practices that don't belong to any tradition, agnostics, atheists and seekers welcome i also want to welcome in those dear to us who have died welcome and our elders those in the room those who are with us today those in the community that we live in a part of and those that have passed on and I also just want to give a moment if there is some other part of our diversity that you want to welcome into the space today, feel free to either unmute or put it in the chat. It'd be great if there's anything else that you'd like to welcome in. The more than human. Thanks, Hannah. Absolutely. I can hear the birds singing and the sun is shining outside my window there with us welcoming in the sun. Yeah, and to all and no political leanings. Thanks so much, everybody. And finally, I want to welcome in our ancestors, those who have gone before us in our social movements, in our communities, on whose shoulders we stand. Welcome. 
thank you everybody for hearing that being with that uh, whether that was your first time hearing that kind of a welcome or not it's really great to have you here um so i'm just going to start by introducing myself and then we're going to introduce the team that are holding this space uh, so my name's Catherine. I use she, her pronouns. Uh, I'm a facilitator. I work with individuals and groups in social movements, primarily based in the UK. Um, and I'm also a researcher working on land-based education projects. Uh, and I'm here co-facilitating with Alice. Alice, it would be great if you want to introduce yourself. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm also a researcher working on uh, social movement learning and organising in the UK agroecology movement. I'm a community organizer and facilitator, focusing mostly on local and sustainable food systems. And I work for the Land Workers Alliance on their project, Your Farming Future, supporting peer-to-peer -peer learning in that. Thanks, Catherine. Great. And I just want to point to a few other people who are in the space, holding space with us. Uh, so Jazina and Christabel, uh, who have been co-developing this session today and are also going to be on the chat uh, and primarily looking at what's going on in the chat to let us know um if you want to give us a wave um great and then uh, Amma and hannah uh, who are going to be our care coordinators today uh, so if anything arises for you in the session they're waving at you now um do feel free to drop them a message they have care in their in their name um if you want to have a chat you need to debrief something you want to process something away from the big group uh, they're here uh, if you need to check in with someone you need a listener uh, during this next three hours um, I also want to point to Cordelia and say thank you so much for holding the tech for us. Um, Cordelia is going to be on tech, so if you have tech troubles, then do message. You can click on the chat box uh, and in the everyone write Cordelia into the send chat to uh, if you have a tech query. Um, also want to welcome in Alana, who's going to be taking notes for us. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, and also Jana, who is the ORFC um, volunteer today uh, and is going to be helping us as well with the chat. So thanks so much to this whole team. You'll be hearing mostly from me and Alice, but there are many people that have been involved in the holding and creation of today's session. Um, and I just want to flag a couple of things. One is that this session is being recorded. Um, this is so we can share it with those that were unable to join us today. If you'd rather not be recorded, feel free to take yourself off video. Um, that means your name and face won't be on the recording. And also, if you want to drop a message in the chat, either to me or Alice, just to let us know that you'd rather not be on the recording, we can remove you from the part that's happened to this point. Um, and also that we are working uh, with both an on-screen talking participatory frame and we're also working with the chat. People are already commenting, sharing where you're from. There's often a chat in both spaces. Uh, Alice and I are primarily on screen, not following the chat. So if things are emerging in the chat, Christabel and Dezina will be able to to mention those things to us. Um, but if the chat gets a bit uh, frenetic for us to manage, we might press pause on it at some point, um, just if we need to catch ourselves up, uh, if there's a lot of, of stuff going on in the chat. Um, so I think that's all the intro bit. That's a lot of stuff. Um, if you need to ask any questions as we go, please feel free. Um, I'm now gonna hand over to Alice, who's gonna tell us what we're gonna do today. Great, thanks Catherine. Um, and it's just worth noting that this work that we're going to do today is a first step in looking at theories of change, which is a process that shared assets and Lion are collaborating on to, to really understand the theories of change in the land justice movement. Um, so first, before I kind of give my explanation of theory of change, um, it would be great to draw on the wisdom of the group and just get some input on what comes to mind when you think of theory of change or theories of change. What does it mean to you? What words do you associate with it? So you can use the chat box to share things um, or you can raise your hand using the raise hand function or physically raise your hand if you're not able to do that and someone will pick up on it. So does anyone, what do you think of when you think of theory of change? Does it mean anything to you? Yep. What do we hope to achieve and how might we get there? Justice and equity. It's a really clear line drawn between what we really want to achieve and how we're doing it. Vision, objectives and measurable outcomes. 
focus on impact. Mm, pathways to change. Yeah, so if anyone came to this workshop and I'm not quite having a concept of what theories of change are, all of these contributions, a roadmap to change, understanding how things change and an idea of different ways that change can happen, all of these things, a tool to focus a vision, like lots is coming up in the chat, which hopefully gives you an idea. So I'll just kind of give my own summary as well. Um, so when I think of theory of change, um, it's really about when we're engaged in this work of trying to create social change, then we tend to have an idea, whether it's conscious or not, of how change is going to come about. So, for example, through government policy, institutions, individual behaviour change, or perhaps grassroots mobilisation. So this idea we have of how change comes about will then guide the decisions that we make about what actions we take and what actions we prioritize. So for collective work between different organizations and within a movement like the land justice movement uh, to be effective, then it's, it's quite important that we have a, a shared theory of change or at least complementary theories of change. Um, and it's really vital for our own work to make our theories of change explicit and understand how they relate to our actions. Um, because otherwise there's a risk of spending a disproportionate amount of time and energy on action that we don't actually believe is gonna bring about change. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the aims of the session and then the structure of the session um, before we go to the first exercise. Um, so the aim of today's session is, and this is on um, slide three of the slides, um, which Catherine has just shared in the chat. Um, so you can use the slides to follow along um, as we go through different sections of this workshop today. Um, so the aim of today's session is to increase our awareness and understanding of theories of change and collectively assess current movement practice within the land justice movement as a first step, as I said, in a longer process that shared assets and line will be holding to develop a, a kind of land justice movement theory of change. So as we've developed this workshop, it's changed a little from where it started out. So if it no longer feels like something that is for you, then, then please feel welcome to um, leave. And for everyone else, we really look forward to holding this conversation and, and taking this first step in, in developing a collective theory of change. So on slide four, you've got the session structure. We're going to begin by getting to know each other a bit better and share why we're here. Um, and then we're going to start to uncover our theories of change through a future visioning exercise. We'll then have a short break. Um, and then we're going to show you 10 different theories of change that we've taken from NEON, the New Economy Organizers Network, and find to be useful in this kind of work. So you'll each have the option to focus on a particular theory of change that resonates with you in breakout rooms. And we'll be sharing reflections on the strengths of these theories of change, our experiences with them, um, and which other theories of change complement or conflict with them. We'll then take a second break um, before turning our attention more concretely to the land justice movement and trying to understand which theories of change are, are present in the movement um, and have group discussions around how we can work together and find commonality whilst also making space for difference and complexity. And we'll then offer some closing activities. So before we go to the introductions um, and getting to know each other, um, I just want to highlight that in this session, we really welcome in the different theories of change that people might hold and recognize that there may be some tensions between different theories of change and different approaches. And the aim is not to make everyone agree or say that one theory of change is the right one, um, but it's to see where we can find commonality and how we can hold with care any tensions that might exist between theories of change, as well as creating more effective collective action through just making more explicit the theories of change that we hold when we're working together. So I'm gonna pass back to Catherine um, for the next bit. Great, thanks, Alice. Um, so we are 93 folks now, uh, and to do a check-in in the full group might take 
more than a day. So we're going to invite you to go into breakout groups, uh, whether there just be three or four of you, depending if there's more than one of you on the screen, um, and have a chance to get to know just a couple of each other. Um, and the invitation is just to share your name and what brought you along today? What made you interested in coming to this session? Um, and just to get a sense of that from each other. And you'll have about 10 minutes. Um, so just to check in and arrive with each other um, and have a bit of a chat. And um, so Cordelia, when you're ready, if you can set up the breakout groups, that would be grand. Welcome back, everybody. Um, I hope you had a few moments in a breakout group. Some of you may have had longer than others. Um, and had a chance to meet a few folks who are in this room with us. Um, just want to take one or two minutes just to invite in the chat, like anything you heard or wanted to share about why you're in this space today, just to give us a sense. Maybe you didn't get a chance to share and you'd like to be lovely to hear or read what you wanted to share with us about why you came along to this session today. Yeah, and you're welcome to write in the chat or raise a hand, which you can do if you click the reactions button on the bottom of your screens and click the raise hand function. Great, so Fran, to expand vision and hear new ideas. To learn about the language being used. Great, thanks, John. Um, for me, hey, theory, theory. yeah, um, just to learn about what theory changes. I feel like in our group, um, I think we were talking about how it's a bit like intimidating as a term. And then I feel like people have explained what it is to me a lot, but then I still find it confusing. But, um, yeah. yeah, great. Absolutely. Yeah. And thanks for naming that the term is confusing because it is. Uh, I think today we're just wanting to go into like, what does this actually mean? What are the options? Um, so, yeah, great. Uh, and more of being shared in the chat. So thanks so much for that, everybody. That's grand. Um, so uh, I'm now going to pass back to Alice, um, who's going to lead us into the first part of this process. So, Alice, over to you. Thanks, Catherine. Um, so to help us settle into figuring out what our theories of change are, try and imagine how we think change will happen, we're gonna do a future visioning exercise. So for this, if you just try and um, kind of move to seat yourself comfortably, if you want to, if you're comfortable closing your eyes, um, then do that. If you'd prefer to keep your eyes open, um, then that's fine also. So just take a moment to relax, roll your shoulders back, maybe shift in your seat and move your body, stretching gently in any way that you need to. And take a few deep grounding breaths. And just take a moment to think about what you think some of the main aims for the land justice movement are. Not thinking too hard about it, just anything that pops up for you instantly. Now, see if you can picture yourself sitting where you are in this workshop. Get that image of yourself in your mind and then start to zoom out the image of yourself becoming less clear. And as you turn around, you begin moving forward through time. So however you wanna visualize that happening, it's totally up to you, your method of time travel. So maybe that is seeing a calendar flipping forward from 2022 to 23, 24, 25 and onwards, or perhaps traveling through, I like to see a tunnel of light with time speeding up and shooting past me. And you're moving past the changes that are coming in the next few years. All of the hard work, the collaboration, 
your friends and comrades whizzing past you until we all end up together in 2040. So you take a brief look back at yourself, just over your shoulder, a memory of this workshop, this point in time, this moment in your life, and then turn back around and let yourself settle into 2040. So much has changed. The 2020s, 2030s saw a massive amount of cha challenge, collaboration, resistance, and movement building. Now in 2040, the land justice movement, and perhaps you wanna imagine any other movements that you're part of, has achieved many of its aims. It feels good. You're older now and have seen a lot shift and have done a lot to create that change. What does success look like? Imagine yourself on the land, alongside the people you most want to be there. What are they doing? Where are you? Where do you go? What else is there and how does everyone feel? You hear someone calling that it's lunchtime and you all go together around a table outside in the sunshine, a sunny day much like we had this morning across the country. As a group, you remember this critical time in 2022, when so much seemed uncertain and change was so critical. You all reflect on how things changed over the next few years, slowly at first and then gathering momentum. Who is at the forefront of the change? Was it government? Was it institutions? Was it business and powerful elites changing their minds and practices? Was it individuals changing, fast public change? Or maybe grassroots resistance and alternatives growing larger? Who else was involved? Who took up change next? And what changes did they make happen? Try to imagine all of the things that you want to see, how they came into being. Mm -hmm. What it looks like now in 2040. How did these things happen? What brought about the change? Was it direct action? Media campaigns? Participatory policy processes? Changing of laws? Maybe organizing in communities? Was it divestment in the dominant system? Education? How did you organize? And who did you organize with? All sitting around the lunch table you take a deep sigh. <sighs> so much hard work, so much beautiful change. You sit back, close your eyes and start to focus on your breath again. Feel your way back through time into your body here in 2022. Take a few deep breaths.
holding any lasting images you want to bring with you. And then open your eyes if you had them closed. So I know we all have different levels of imagination around um, or visual imagination, thoughts, but however you manage to conjure that up, I hope that was useful for you to start to think about some of these changes. So we're going to give five minutes now for journaling and reflection. So I'll call you back at 2.43, if you try and get a piece of paper, a pen, you can turn off your camera if you've got it on and just try and get down some of those ideas, some of those words and images from that vision, any reflections you've had so far. And we're gonna use that to kind of move us into the next stage. Thanks, and that would be really beautiful to hear anything that you want to share from your vision of the future and how we're going to get there in the chat, or if you want to raise your hand um, and share a little bit about it. So anything that stood out to you, even if it was a small detail um, or a strategy, who did you see as leading the change? What needed to happen? And we've already had really wonderful contributions from D Woods, Phil, Jazina. about um, moving to collective access. Hi, yeah. I'll, I'll say something if I may. Right, um, I've I actually found lots of your prompts really hard to uh, like answer, <laughs> but it was really nice to be challenged. And um, one thing that I thought was interesting that came up later was this, um, I was sitting there at the table thinking, oh, uh, people know more, not just about any change, but people know more about who, who owns things and why. Mm. And I was thinking about that, that thing of like, like just that some of the bubbles have been burst. Uh, found it hard to imagine the ideal that we might be trying to get to, but the idea that um, this place, we just, we ha all have more collective knowledge about why and uh, how we got to where we got to with land in the UK specifically. Hmm, that's really great. Thanks, Rebecca, for sharing. Um, and yeah, it was a really some really challenging prompts <laughs> to, to essentially try and solve everything and think about how we get there. But hopefully, some like small small little nuggets can come out of that. And yeah, I've had some really good sharings in the chat as well. Um, Hannah says lots of different approaches. A lot of people saying about land to be held in collectively in communities, mm. some beautiful imagery from Bella. And Emma focusing on justice and redress and repairing past wrongs in terms of land ownership. Um, and then can we go to uh, Gwen has the hand raised? Hey. Yeah. Um, I think I just imagined um, our, like my very close friends and me and how I think I have a lot of faith in them and that we'll manage no matter if there's sort of structures from on high or it's acceptable in the norm or it's normal what we do. I have faith that we'll be okay and we'll manage to 
carve out ourselves a little bit of happiness and okayness in the 2040 world, which may be really chaotic and hard to live in, but we'll be okay because we create each other. <laughs> and like, it'll be a little happy world where we grow our own veg and <laughs> live in uh, little cool that's houses. Really, <laughs> yeah, it's really beautiful. Gwen and it is certainly something I took from um reading a lot of like uh kind of original feminist sci-fi utopias and dystopias like realizing no matter where we get to when we are doing it together and with love there will always be that togetherness even if it's in struggle um and that's a beautiful thought um and then I think Kate had her hand raised and then um, Anya afterwards, does Kate, do you still um, want to? Yeah, I put something in the chat. I think it was just thinking about the, how the change happens. The main image I had in my head was of, um, of some kind of crisis, of something snapping almost, or like overflowing, but that we were there ready to catch the fallout from that somehow. And that actually the legislative change and things kind of happened after that in order to retrofit things. Um, but that was just the, yeah, that was the kind of sense I had. I couldn't think of a process more than like being ready to respond when the opportunity came. Mm. Yeah, and that you're actually touching on quite a lot of like different theories of change coming together in a, in a process of like what comes first so that we can be ready for other changes to happen. Um, and Anya? I think for me, the thing that just kept um, coming to me was this kind of change in mindset. So this idea of sitting around in 2040 and being like, my God, back in 2022, we like 92% of our land was not accessible to us. We couldn't even access it. And there was an uproar about it. No, like there wasn't generally across the whole country this kind of outrage and fury about it. That's so weird. What were we all thinking? Kind of thing. This kind of like that 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 will will be incredible. Like it's it's incredulous if you looked back, having got somewhere, that that was the case because it's just like the elephant in the room the whole time. So I guess um, something about not just among. A, a, like a more general uh, across like most of the country kind of like change in mindset was the thing that kept kind of coming to me. Mm. Thanks a lot Anya um, and yeah I really want to also getting a lot of appreciation for that in the chat as well um, and I really want to appreciate all of the contributions people have given in the chat and taking time to write out. Luckily we've now got a short break which will give you time to go through those because obviously we're quite a large group and and everyone's got a lot to share so we're going to take a break now for I believe 10 minutes let me just double check yep a 10 minute break um it's an opportunity to have a stretch um read through the things in the chat kind of connect a little bit more with your own ideas before we go into the next session get a cup of tea do whatever you need to do to kind of break up the session um, and we will see you all in 10 minutes welcome back everybody i hope you had a nice break and uh, if you want to come back on your screen or just let us know in the chat that you're back i'm uh, gonna get started again in a moment um been very much enjoying the conversation that has been going on around golf courses and wormeries and strawberry farms in the chat. So if you want to have a read of that at some point, I would recommend. Um, and also because quite a few folks were busy on the chat in the break, I'm just going to invite us a little time away from the screen. Um, so if you want to look away from your screen, um, you can look up, you can maybe look around the room that you're in um if you want to have a bit of a stretch if you didn't manage to move very much in the break and um, we're still here for another couple of hours so just take care of your bodies if you need to have a bit of a bit of a move you're very welcome 
Um, and going to go into the next part in a moment. Um, so we've been thinking about where are we going broadly? What are we looking for? Uh, and we're now going to start getting into the kind of nitty gritty of theories of change. What is a theory of change? What are the different kind of options um, around how we might get from where we are now to these visions that we've started imagining into? Um, so what we're going to do in a moment is Alice and I are going to read you 10 possible theories of change. This list might not be comprehensive, but it's got quite a good few different options. We're going to read those aloud and they're in the slide deck as well, so you can read along if you would like to. Um, and then we're going to invite you to go into breakout rooms to the theory of change you feel most drawn to, most interested by. So as we're reading them aloud, just have a think about, oh, do I want to go towards that one? Am I interested in that one? Because uh, then you'll get a bit of time with some other folks who are also interested in that one to have a chat about it. Um, so, yeah, we're going to just read through some possible options of theories of change just to get a bit more clear about what are we talking about. And this is a list that, as Alice mentioned, I was generated by the New Economy Organisers Network, uh, or NEON. And I'm just going to drop a link uh, to their website in the chat if you um, want to find out more about what they do. They've got some great stuff on social movement building. Um, so that's where we're drawing this from. Uh, and the slides, I think, have also just been shared again um, in the chat. So if you want to follow along, we're reading from slide seven. Uh, Alice, do you want to take the first one? Yeah, sure. OK, so the first one we have is the individual change theory. So this is defined by um, believing that a better world will come through transformative change of a critical mass of individuals, their consciousness, attitudes, behavior, and skills. So if you subscribe to this theory of change, you'd likely um, invest in individual change through training and reflection, um, do work on personal transformation, raising consciousness through workshops or processes, um, and this method was adopted strongly within the civil rights movement. Grand. The next one on slide eight, if you're reading along, is the healthy relationships and connections theory. Um, so this is defined as a better world emerges out of a process of breaking down isolation, polarization, division, prejudice and stereotypes between and among groups. Strong relationships are a necessary ingredient for a better world. And so some methods that we might use in this theory of change would be processes of dialogue, networking, relationship building processes, joint efforts and practical programs on substantive problems and creating spaces where people can engage and build trust between each other. And so the next one we have is the withdrawal of resources theory. So this is defined um, by thinking that some social problems require vast amounts of material and human capital. So if we can interrupt the supply of people and goods to the system that maintains the problem, then it will collapse and our vision will be realized. So methods would be campaigns to cut off funds um, and national budgets, uh, divestment, conscientious objection and or resistance, and embargoes and boycotts. Uh, the next one is the reduction of violence theory. And this is defined as peace will result as we reduce the levels of violence perpetrated by combatants or their representatives. So methods of this type of theory of change can include ceasefires, the creation of zones of peace, withdrawal or retreat from direct engagement, introduction of peacekeeping forces or interposition, um, observation missions, accompaniment efforts, promotion of nonviolent methods for achieving social, political and economic ends. And the next one is the root causes slash justice theory. So this is defined um, by believing that we can achieve our social change vision by addressing the underlying issues of injustice oppression and exploitation, um, threats to identity by cultural and political dominance and people's sense of injury slash victimization. 
Um, so it'd be about tackling issues through the lens of power and privilege. So methods would be long-term campaigns for social and structural change, truth and re reconciliation, restorative justice work, um, changes in social institutions, laws, regulations, and economic systems, and decolonization. Uh, the next one is the institutional development theory. Um, so this is defined as our vision will be secured by establishing stable and reliable social institutions that guarantee democracy, equity, justice, and fair allocation of resources. And methods include new constitutional and governance arrangements or entities, the development of human rights, the rule of law, anti-corruption, and the establishment of democratic, equitable economic structures, economic development and democratization. So the next one is the political elites theory. So in this approach, um, we believe that our vision will be achieved when it is in the interest of the political and other leaders to take the necessary steps. So our efforts must change the political calculus of key leaders and groups. Um, so the methods you'd use for this are to raise the costs and reduce the benefits for political elites of maintaining the problem while increasing the incentives for the vision or solution um, and engage active and influential constituencies in favor of our vision while withdrawing international support or funding um, and lobbying and influencing those in power. The next one, we're on slide 14 now, if you're following along in the slides, um, is the grassroots mobilization theory. So this is defined as when the people lead, the leaders will follow. So if we mobilize enough opposition to this problem, political leaders will have to pay attention. So methods include mobilizing grassroots groups to either oppose the current situation or advocate for positive action, nonviolent direct action campaigns, the use of the media, education, mobilization efforts, uh, and organizing advocacy groups and potentially dramatic events to raise consciousness like media stunts. And we're on the second to last one now uh, on slide six, slide 15, the economics theory. So this is defined as one politician once said, it's the economy stupid. And so people make personal decisions and decision makers make policy decisions based on a system of rewards and incentives and punishments and sanctions that are essentially economic in nature. So if we can change the economies associated with the problem, then we can bring about change. So for this, you would use government or financial institutions to change supply and demand dynamics, control incentive and reward systems, uh, boycott subsidies and shareholder actions. And then the last one uh, is the public attitudes theory. So this is defined as many social injustices are partly motivated by prejudice, misperceptions and intolerance of difference. We can promote our visions for a better world by using the media, so television, radio or the internet, to change public attitudes and build greater tolerance in society. So methods here include using TV, radio, podcast programs, modelling preferred behaviour, uh, having social media dialogues, undertaking symbolic acts of solidarity or unity, advertising dialogues among groups in conflict with subsequent publicity. So that's a lot. That's 10 different theories of change. They might not all be compatible with each other. We're not necessarily advocating all of them, any of them, one more than another. At this particular moment, we really want to just open the space that whatever you feel interested in, whatever you're drawn to um, is where we want to go next. Um, and this is where we're going to try something uh, exciting with Zoom and hope that it works, um, where we've created, Cordelia has created um, breakout groups with each of these theories of change as a heading. And you can self-assign yourself into those groups. So I'm going to tell you how to do that in a moment. Uh, once you get into your groups, the invitation is to answer a couple of questions with your group. You're going to have about 20 minutes and we want to invite you to share why are you drawn to this particular theory of change? Why is it interesting to you? Why do you think it works? As it might be, you could draw from experience. You might have been involved in a social media campaign or some direct action or some public policy work or a workshop where you really notice that theory of change working. Uh, and then 
we want to invite you to share what you think it doesn't cover. Um, so often we don't just use one theory of change. We might need more than one. Um, so what's missing? Um, I'm going to share the slides in the chat again. So you have the, the text that we were just reading aloud. And then if you go to the breakout groups tab, which you should have, you should be able to assign yourself to the breakout groups. Um, Cordelia, if you're able to talk us through how that might work, that would be grand. Wow, what an experiment of technology. Um, in, in our original plan of doing it in person, we were going to put these up on the walls and let you kind of move around and read them yourselves. Um, but yeah, it's hopefully this workshop it is actually more accessible to more people because it's online now, but we have to deal with some of the challenges of, of moving online and our own uh, <laughs> inabilities with uh, Zoom technology. Um, so it's great to have everyone back in the room. Um, and we're not gonna do any kind of um, feeding back from each group where someone has to present, we all have to listen to them. Instead, we're just gonna use some questions um, to draw out some key reflections around your discussions and also just, you know, if you didn't get a chance to, to talk, your thoughts on the theories of change that you were reading. So the first question, um, and I'm inviting responses um, in the chat or for you to raise your hand. Um, uh, it makes it easier if you can raise your hand using the raise hand function, but if not, someone else will, will pick it up and let me know. Um, so the first question is, what do you think was really powerful about this theory of change that you were focused on? What felt really powerful about it? Is the idea just to jump in or do we type in the chat? Um, you can jump in, type in the chat, put your hand up. Cool. Um, well, I think for me, I was in the relationships one. Um, and I think a really powerful part of that is it's quite humanizing. So we tend to see, we tend to have some issues with empathy, I think, in our societal structures in a lot of ways. So viewing all humans as capable of relationship and communication and uh, common ground, commonality, uh, having us all on the same level, I think that's a really powerful part of it. Mm. That's something we're also going to be drawing on in the next session, being able to understand this commonality. Um, yeah, and then Emma shares that um, from the group, she was in looking at the root causes of the problem. Um, so I'm imagining that was the justice uh, one. Yeah, grassroots mobilization, a mechanism by which other types of change might happen. Even small reforms often require mass mobilization. So something we um, mentioned a little bit before was that you know, these theories of change, you won't just choose one, often you'll have multiple theories of change all working together. And you might imagine these in a kind of linear process, or you might imagine them as just having a diversity of strategies to, um, that you think will be most effective. Yep, and then Eddie has, has a hand up, do you wanna share? Yeah, in my groups, the more uh, grassroots mobilized theory, uh, one group member had shared that because in the former history and also the people they have decided to, 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 to participate, to look for changing. So um, this is a very powerful message because yeah, yeah, people will understand. Mm. Thanks, Eddie. Um, I'm going to move us on to the next question now, uh, which is what examples came to mind that felt inspiring to remember? So as you're looking at that theory of change, did any examples come up or do any examples come up to you now about the kinds of movements that you've seen or the kind of actions that you've been a part of um, that have used this theory of change? How did you connect to this? So it could be historical, it could be um, past. So anti-apartheid came up in one group. 
And then there's Ecological Land Co-op and Shared Assets working on things. Are there any other examples people have of past or present movements or groups? Thanks, Jazina. For root causes, everyone involved in overthrowing enslavers and colonizers, most of whom will never know their names. It's really important to recognize that as well. And also who gets remembered and what kind of theories of change get promoted and valorized in our history books based on what are most acceptable now. Um, great, thanks. Any others? Yes, yeah, so there's a really strong point coming out of the root causes that if often people aren't remembered or the, the kind of history of that resistance is, is erased and there are a lot of people doing this work um, that might not be recognized. So then the third question is, what other theories of change might really support the theory of change you were drawn to and why? So this is where we start thinking about pairing them together. So if you're responding in the chat, then um, kind of write to together. If you wanna kind of put your hand up or just call out and share a bit of a, why you think two might go together, if it's one before the other, or just kind of like complementary tactics at the same time. So, Yep, engagement in political processes at the local level feeds up into political elites like the planning system and healthy relationship goes strongly with root causes. Shared by Kim and Clem. Does anyone want to... Healthy relationships and political elites possibly, yeah? Root causes and relationship theories is quite a few people because relationship building is inherently an anti-colonial process. Thank you for that, Diana. And grassroots mobilization and root causes. Yeah, so there's a lot that connects with root causes. So like this really important understanding what the root causes of injustice are in our society to be able to move forward with any of the theories of change that we have. Yeah, and does anyone want to explain a little bit more about the connections that they see between different ones or how it relates to their experience. Mark? Yeah, and I agree. I think Amma was talking about the need for you know, sort of strategy around this. So we're limited in our resources and capacity. And so if we're going to kind of use a, like a particular type of change to drive another type of change, like it needs sequencing and it needs coordination. And so we need some kind of shared strategy to move between these different approaches together so that we can sort of maximize our impact to them. Mm. Yeah, that's a great point. And we're hoping that's the kind of like strategic thinking that we can do in more focused discussions following this, um, hosted by Shared Assets and, and, uh, and Lion. Yeah, so there's a lot of links um, that people are creating with root causes and other theories of change um, as it's such a vital basis of change. Yeah, it seems to connect and permeate with everything. And so like Mark was saying, um, like how we then pair those with others in a sequential way and getting some kind of collective action around that is also really important. How much time we spend on each of those things, which is gonna be one of the next activities, um, or at least like the kind of priorities we give um, to different theories of change is also important um, because we are limited in our capacity and our energy. So the last question is, can you see any theories of change that conflict with the theory of change? that you were interested in. So are there any that wouldn't work together? And, and like maybe give an explanation of how you think that they might conflict. And it might just be in terms of um, narrative or the kind of capacity that we have to engage in both 
Um, it might be because they're based on different underlying principles. Um, yeah, it would be great to get some, if anyone wants to explain and um, put their hand up and explain kind of their thoughts on this, that would be great as well, because it's quite a kind of difficult thing to articulate how these, where, where there are conflicts, if there are conflicts. Yeah, so like Emma said, the economic one um, can be a bit uh, problematic um, or maybe a bit problematic and conflicting with other ones um, because it's prioritizing perhaps the economy over other things. But there are many different ways in, and similarly with political elites, are we continuing to give the same amount of power um, or kind of invest in that power that people already have? Yep, Gwen. Yeah, I suppose the yeah the political elites and the economic ones, like you're just saying, um, they both have like are using the things that we may well be fighting against or trying to deconstruct in the other theories of change and therefore have conflicts with them but also might it might be completely different like I suppose it depends how far in the future you're thinking like the political elites of really far in the future might be different to who they are now <laughs> so it might not always apply yeah it really depends on what system we have but yeah, if our belief is to not have political elites then having a theory or of change that focuses on them is, yeah, potentially yeah. Uh, a yeah. conflict. And like, yeah, the money one, if we don't have capitalism anymore, then obviously it's not worth the point. Yeah, exactly. If, we, if, if the desire is to undermine capitalism and challenge focus on money, then like refocusing on economics might be um, potentially a conflict. Clem? Um, yeah, I was just going to say um, I have some concerns about the individual change theory because quite a lot is focused around individualism and a lot of climate justice sort of work, or not the climate justice work, but yeah, it can just be quite reductive and could be at odds with some of the root causes, more sort of systemic yeah, looking at systemic problems um, is maybe more important sometimes, whereas the, the healthy relationships is looking at that reciprocity and relational um, sense of social movements and community and culture, but the individual one, that, that, that concerns me. It's so. mm, a really good point, Clem. And I think like there are lots of examples that we can see now of how the focus on individual behavior change has been co-opted to be kind of consumed within the dominant system um um yeah I completely agree with what Clem was saying and I think obviously in the current context that we're living in like neo neoliberalism has relied on individualism becoming like the predominant narrative so that we do forget about the collective so I completely hear what Clem was saying and agree I'm just wondering if there's a way we could like take elements of that theory of change and maybe bring it into the like healthy relationships one. Cause I think we're also living in a world where we're taught not to have a healthy relationship with ourselves and to care for ourselves and to have good boundaries and to rest. And I think there is like a place for all of that. Um, and I also think learning to take responsibility for your own actions and your own contribution, um, that feels important on an individual level. So like maybe we can take some elements of that and kind of, yeah, bring it out of that. Mm. Yeah, I'm really hearing the combination of those two. Like just, I mean, an example is how, um, how much easier it is to buy sustainable things, feed yourself from local food systems and kind of ethical, ethically procured things if you're sharing those with others, if you have other people supporting that either economically or just like, as a social norm, then that's much easier to make that change. And you also kind of develop that as a, as a shared practice rather than it just being about my, my practice. Yeah. 
Um, are there any other contributions? There have been some great comments in the chat. Um, yeah, particularly like uh, some conversation going on about Cole's comment about matching up um, root causes and uh, and the kind of non uh, non-violence one. Wow, so so many good contributions. Um, so I'm gonna in a moment we're gonna have a break and let all of that settle and a chance to read back through it and just kind of draw together our ideas about things. Um, but before we go into the break, um, I'm gonna just do an individual activity and an assessment of the different theories of change that you use um, either as an individual or as a, a group or project or organization. Um, so we've already touched upon this idea that we won't just have one theory of change, but we're likely to have multiple supporting theories of change. Um, we won't be able to get quite into the detail of thinking about how we sequence those. Um, but one thing we can do in like a quick way is just think about how much energy or attention we give to each of those. Um, so we're gonna do this in the form of, either you can draw uh, a line from like uh, zero to 100%, um, or you can use like a pie chart, uh, like there's an example in the slides. Um, so just taking a moment before we go into the break, um, again, using pen and paper, um, if you've got it to hand from writing the notes earlier. Um, so get hold of a pen and paper and just draw some representation of a whole and think about with your own group or project or organization. Um, and if you're not in one, perhaps one that you admire in the land justice movement, what are the theories of change present? And like how much emphasis is given to each, which one is, is dominant perhaps, and which how do other ones come into that? Um, so obviously this is not an exact science, it's just to have a visual representation and get us thinking about how much weighting we give to different theories of change um, within groups. Um, and then perhaps reflecting on, is are these theories of change similar or different to the ones that you personally were drawn to? Um, and perhaps if there's someone else from your, your group or organization here, then later on it might be interesting to chat to them and see if you have the same uh, perception um, and, and what weighting you gave to each, because often these aren't explicit within organizations um, or they change over time, they're quite complex. So this is just gonna be a short exercise to get you thinking about it um, and, and move us on to the next. You're gonna have a break until five o'clock. Um, and you can continue reflecting, reading back in the chat, um, reflecting on this picture, um, if, you, if that's what you want to focus on. Um, but do also take an opportunity to go to the bathroom, get a drink, uh, stretch, look out the window while it's still light. Um, and we'll see you back in 10 minutes. So however you want to choose to share, spend this time and um, then do that. Welcome back, everybody. If you want to start coming back to your chairs, to the screens, if you want to show your videos. Um, hope you had a nice break, whatever you chose to do. It's been lush seeing that people are dancing, skanking, having a good time with your bodies in the break time. Thank you for that. Um, and for starting to share your contact details as well. So there's an invitation if you want to be involved in follow ups after this session, if you drop your email address in the chat, either to everyone or directly to Christabel, um, then uh, contacts can be made uh, going forward. Uh, so we're going to move on into the next part, um, which is getting a bit more, I was going to say focused, and it's also a wider movement level um onto theories of change in the land justice movement whatever that might be um so we're gonna um we're gonna do this having a go with some spectrum lines which is a tool uh, to have a sense around is this a really um 
well used, often used, really useful uh, theory of change for the land justice movement? Or is this one actually probably not so useful to the land justice movement, whatever that is? Um, and we're going to have a go at that on the slides in a moment. And I'm just going to invite you to go with whatever the land justice movement means to you, because um, it's quite likely that we'll have different interpretations of what that is. Um, it might involve different groups for each of us, different actors, different individuals, um, different collectives of people. Um, but we're just going to invite you to just give a representation, very brief, just to give us a sense. Um, so I'm going to pop the slides in the chat. Um, and from slide 20 uh, to slide 29 uh, are the theories of change we were just working with before the break. And on each slide, um, there's a spectrum. And at one end, it says high use in land justice movements. And at the other end, it says low use in land justice movements. And below are a load of dots. So the invitation is for you just to take a dot, just click on it and drag it uh, to whichever part of the line you feel is most accurate. Um, and it might be we disagree. Accurate. Yeah. Um, I think I've accidentally changed it to view only, and I think you're the only one that can change it back to edit access. Really sorry for that. Um, while Catherine's doing that, can I just ask, is it is this our assessment of like the current situation or what we think should be the situation? Mm, great question. Uh, so I think it's the current situation. Like, where are we now? This is a like, I don't know, uh, looking at the lie of the land. So first land metaphor, we've done two hours without one. Well done, everybody. Um, but looking at the lie of the land around like, where is the movement at now? Where do we think we are? Um, because that's going to really help us in terms of like, where do we think we should go? But we kind of have to know a bit where we're starting. So hopefully those slides work for you. And if you want to have a go at grabbing some dots um, and yeah, if you feel like a lot of people are on one slide, maybe move to another one. Uh, and come back to it. I'm just going to give five minutes, just a quick off the top of the head thought to give us a brief picture. So have a go at that. And if you have any tech troubles, either let Cordelia or me or Alice know. Okay, so we're just coming to the end of putting some dots on these spectrum lines. Um, and still see some dots being moved around. So keep going you want while I just talk us through some initial noticings. Um, what I'm seeing is how spread out we are, how much we have a real range of like whether it's low use or high use. Um, so on the individual theory of change, there's like broad clustering ish around the, the middle to lower end, but it's a really spread spread around the healthy relationships again really spread throughout the line. Um, the withdrawal of resources theory, like more towards the lower end. Uh, similarly, with the reduction of violence theory, more towards the lower end, but there are definitely a couple further up. Root causes and justice theory, nearly all towards the higher end. Probably not surprising given where people were locating themselves in breakout groups before. Again, spread quite, quite a way across the middle section on the institutional development theory political elite theory, lower down, um, but still, still a widespread grassroots mobilizations theory, more clustering towards the upper end, but again, across the line, economics theory further towards the end, but across, across the whole line. Um, and then public attitudes theory, again, quite a clustering in the middle, but, but a broad spread. Um, so I think what does this tell us? Well, a couple of noticings. One is it really matters, like, what do we really mean by these things that like we're, we're working with brief definitions, some methods, our own hunch about what these things are. Um, so really being able to, like, get clear with each other. What are we talking about when we're talking about this theory of change? And do we disagree um, as much as we think we do? Um, so getting some clarity is probably going to be helpful for us in the next stages of this process. Um, but also that we will have really different priorities about which theories of change are most needed, which in some ways is a relief because none of us can do everything. 
Um, and if we need a combination of theories of change, having people who are drawn more to one than another is going to be really useful. Um, the conversation then becomes this, like what we were getting into a bit before around the ordering, like how, how does what I do in my theory of change support what you do in your theory of change? Can it, are we able to be mutually beneficial in this way? Um, so thanks so much for giving that snapshot map, um, of, of where we think we are. Um, and yeah, just fascinating to see the spread. So thank you for doing that and being willing to put a dot, not where someone else did. Um, I'm now going to pass to you, Alice, for the next part, uh, and carry on this, this chat. Yeah, great. So for the next part, we're going to have move into breakout groups again, but these are just going to be random. So hopefully more successful in ensuring smaller groups where everyone can chat. Um, and we'll do breakout groups for, for 25 minutes. Um, and we really wanted to incorporate the, the comments earlier about um, how we order and prioritize theories of change and just like start those conversations around strategy and how different theories of change are connected to each other in quite a sequential way while still dealing with this question of where we find commonality or synergy within the movement and how we can deal with difference. So on slide 30, you'll find three questions um, for the breakout groups. Um, and yeah, before going through these, I just really want to acknowledge and like, you know, C Catherine kind of touched upon it as well, that movements are really complex and messy. They're not neat things, their boundaries are really porous and intertwined with other movements and they bring together a wide range of practices across a kind of you know a constellation of organizations projects collectives individuals so when we consider how we might work together effectively to create change then we we do want to try and look for that that commonality in a shared strategy but also acknowledge where there are differences and how we can make space for them, trying to understand whether the differences um, are because of a, a kind of conflict in our underlying values or just a, a different um, approach that could be complementary and try and encompass this um, into a necessarily complex and resilient movement. So in the next section, um, you're in your breakout groups, you're gonna be asked, how should or could we order and prioritize our theories of change? So continuing from those discussions of how some, some theories of change lead on to making the conditions for others to be possible. Um, and then what needs to come first and how can this lead to further change? And um, so what, what generally do you want to start with? And so we could look at some where there's a lot more kind of like commonality already through the spectrum lines in certain areas. Um, and then finally, where is there already synergy between different groups and organizations? So you can draw on the spectrum lines for this and how can we make space for the differences? Like how can we work together where there are differences? Um, and we're going to ask for some some feedback from that afterwards, um, which Catherine will lead. So are there any questions before we go into breakout rooms? Welcome back, everybody. Hope you had good chats in your breakouts yes. um great <laughs> that was a good yes that came in there from someone um yeah it would be wonderful just to hear a bit about um yeah what was juicy in those conversations what do you want to share with the rest of the group just love to hear a few voices either unmute yourself to join in or raise your hand uh, it would be lovely to hear lovely to hear what you were chatting about in your smaller groups Um, I kind of have something because it was great. Yeah, it's go for it. Just fresh in my mind from what we were just saying. 
is um is in answer to the third question i suppose of like how we can join together more easily is through knowing or through our like yeah knowing that we've what we've all lost in terms of our like um uh like knowledge and connection to the land like knowledge of the land and connection to the land like how much we've all lost in terms of like indigenous knowledge and things through colonization and just the processes that have happened throughout history to all of us and yeah yeah thanks Gwen thanks for naming those things um Kate you see your hand Yes, um, I just wanted to sort of name that one of the things we, we we talked around the kind of institutional political elites kind of angle, sort of recognizing that it hadn't really come up in the first set of discussions that were very much around the grassroots, which is obviously super important, but we kind of ended up having a conversation about inheritance tax and the way the land, the way land is taxed and the way that institutions hold a huge amount of power in the land system so thinking about I don't think we came up with an answer but kind of I suppose thinking about what if any theory of change do we need relating to institutions if the vision of the future that we have is one with a very very different institutional kind of landscape if there are any institutions at all um, and I think I don't think we agreed necessarily on all of it but um, I just sort of wanted to put that out there that that's sort of if it's certainly from my perspective anyway, it's a really important piece of the jigsaw and that we've got to address the issue of who holds the power in the system currently and who holds the levers, the most powerful levers for changing the system currently as well. Yeah, great. Thank you, Kate. Um, I really also want to invite people that maybe haven't spoken yet in the big group, like if you've got something on the tip of your tongue that you'd like to share. It would be grand to hear from you. I'd really love to hear what was interesting to you in that conversation you just had about how how do we get strategic about these theories of change? What's what's interesting about the ordering, how we work together? Yeah, Diana, go for it. <laughs> cool. So uh in our group, I think maybe one thing, well, there were many interesting things, um, but when, even when thinking about this like strategic, we started to think about it being non-linear and how it won't necessarily be like we go from here from there and one, two, three, four, five, uh, but more like we were saying, for example, that the relationship building theory is going to be crucial throughout. And it's also one that really enables you to, for example, uh, Mark, I think was saying like, if we have these like relationships and healthy relationships, then we're also able to coordinate with each other and to be like, okay, great. Maybe we go with this theory now, but now let's move on to that one. And maybe you're doing this, but we're doing that. Um, so yeah, so really thinking about this like non-linearity. Non um, yeah, I think that's something I found quite interesting. Yeah, great. Thank you. And someone's just adding Rachel in the chat, like really specific examples of how do we build these different kinds of relationships, like building power within organizations. So relationships across the organizations we're already in, powerful relationships between existing organizations um, and hyperlocal uh, relationships as well. Some examples. Um, thank you for sharing that. Um, anyone else want to want to share anything that was live for you in those? Ah, Daniel had a hand. Yeah. Uh, I've been haunted over Christmas by, we have an 88 year old at our therapeutic gardening, community garden. And I'm just afraid to say that I think that was the last smile he will have until we reconvene five weeks later, which I find horrific. So one of the synergies seems to be, we're not going to starve in this country for the next five years, I don't think, but we have a huge mental health problem and we have social prescribing, so some of our volunteers are prescribed to come down to see us, but we pick up other people. But the value of the community garden to these people just can't be overstated. And I'm being haunted by the look of that man's face. And I'm really worried we don't have the capacity to meet more needs more often than we do. And I just find that is just criminal because it's such a quick win. 
it's an in, almost an instantaneous win and then he's deprived of it until we ring him up or bump into him or say we're open again. It's not acceptable. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah, I just, yeah, I really want to honour the, the mental health pain that you're naming of, of that person in the community garden. And yeah, also want to name that there are, there are people also at the moment who are going without food in this country and it's all, it's all to be tended to. Um, yeah, thanks Dee, at least a fifth of people going hungry in this country and, and there's a mental health crisis and we need to be tending to these things right now. Uh, so I just want to, wanted to name that. Um, Mark, I see your hand is up. Yeah, we talked a lot about the sort of, we kept coming back to the need for healthy relationships and building and, and the, that will require a lot of listening and understanding of each other's difference. And the, so it's not like we talked about like understanding the not developing better knowledge of the problem, but it came to the fact that it's knowledges of the problems. It, it does it, these are plurals and that yeah, you know, we've got a lot better understanding individuals traumas and the dynamics that then play out in the relationships between individuals but we need to be better at understanding collective and group traumas and differences and the dynamics of interrelationships between different types of groups so we need some like intergroup therapists or something to kind of help us to to understand each other um and and what you know where that stuff's come from and how it plays out in our you know difficult relationships um so yeah that that kind of need for need for developing healthy relationships and and the work that that will take like that's not an easy thing to do yeah absolutely thanks mark um fiona i'm sorry if i'm pronouncing your name wrong i see your hand raised no, um, that's absolutely right. Well done. Um, I just think what the two points we heard a moment ago about people having become too far removed from the land. Um, I think that was a, a very good point well made. And also about the community garden, because that's also about people not only being connected to each other, so that links with relationship, but it's also having that physicality with land that produces something, whether it's flowers that pollinate or whether it's actual food, which comes back to the ownership of, of the land and what we do with it. Um, and I used to work with a colleague um, who used to say, you know, children think that chocolate milk comes from brown cows. So, and I think there are people now really waking up to the fact that with a, such an urbanized society, you know, we have become so far removed from where our food comes from. I heard somebody else recently around COP26 said, people don't know what the harvest was like. So they've no idea whether it was a good harvest or a bad harvest. They're too far removed from it. Um, so I think the connection of understanding our food and I think authors like James Rebanks and so on are doing a lot to try and you know, work in a sustainable way but educate people around where food actually comes from. And as I said in our group, Somebody had tweeted recently, if you're going to get behind vegan annuary, couldn't you do it in August when we actually produce, um, you can buy food that's actually produced in this country instead of shipping it from the other side of the world to fulfill your needs. So enough said. Well, there's a lot in there, Fiona. Thanks for, for speaking and sharing. Um, we're, we're nearing towards the end of our time and there's more and more coming in the chat. Um, so I feel like we're not, um, we're not done. There's definitely more to say. Um, I can see Kate, you have a hand. I might take your hand as the last one and then we'll move towards a close. So Kate, over to you. Is that, is that me, Kate? I didn't know how many Kates there. Hi, thank you very much. First of all, Catherine, thank you. And it's such a privilege to be here. Um, um, and apologies to my group, uh, James and Leon, for banging on. Um, but so many elements of what's already been brought up are so important. So many really important things have already been said. Um, but I wanted to put that, as I said in my uh, little group, in a sort of legal framework, in as much that I speak as a tenant farmer, 
primarily to the National Trust. We've been at the same holding for 21 years and I would say the current law is absolutely not fit for purpose. And there is definitely, I would not have believed it uh, before I started here 21 years ago. Uh, somebody mentioned um, a colonial element. And I would say that perhaps in the training of many, many rural surveyors who perhaps um, whatever colleges they go to, um, there is still a shocking colonial mindset, which I'm only saying this as a 52 year old mother who's been um, farming organically for 21 years. We came here in 2000 in the Tamar Valley. Of all women stopped wearing a bra. Sorry. Um, um, yeah, and, and, to, and you've been talking about important relationships, the synergy of important relationships. And I absolutely agree with you. You're absolutely right. And to create the future that I think we all want to be part of, that has to be prioritized. Um, and even with the National Trust, whose head office in Swindon, and there are people within the National Trust who really, really want the right things to happen how that is actually rolled out on the ground level really needs to be addressed. The tenancy agreements really need to be looked at. We are surrounded by empty houses, empty, beautiful, falling down cottages and buildings, fantastic south facing slopes. So much could be done. So we've been planting raw beans today in field scale as a family, six of us, um, but we do mainly embarrassingly I'm ashamed to say still rely upon many Eastern Europeans doing lots of outdoor work and they are absolutely tremendous it is much more difficult to employ local people and this is a crying shame um, so anyway if anyone's out there who can think about the legal framework um, 1995 the um, Tennessee Act changed um, and so now we have FBT, some are only sort of one year, two year, three years. Uh, we had a five year, then a 15 year, then we were served notice to quit, then that estate manager left, moved on. So there's, there's lots of really failed tenancy agreements and so much more could be done with more robust tenancy agreements, but more so um, symbiotic agreements between those who represent the landowners and those working on the land and whether even there ought to be some sort of movement of right to buy from the people who are actually living there and working the land. I know up in Scotland. Kate, I'm gonna I'm gonna say <laughs> we're running out of time. So I'm gonna draw you to a close at that point, but thank you for sharing. And it's great to hear about some of your experiences actually working on the <laughs> land uh, where you are. Um, and yeah, just because I'm aware of time, I'm wanting to move us towards a close. Um, and I think what, what we've heard just a little in the sharing is the range of things we can start tending to, um, whether that's thinking about these legal frameworks and the tenancy agreements and how we shift the ownership of who owns what land. Um, whether it's thinking about how do we heal the difficulties in the groups that we're part of or the tensions we might have with other organizations. Um, how do we think about our relationship to land? How do we tend to the people in our community that rely on the common land spaces that are left um, for not only connection to land, but connection to other beings in those spaces? Um, and before we close, I just want to just invite you to like let all of that sort of swim around you a bit because we've covered a lot in these last couple of hours. And just to just to check in a little bit with how you're doing having heard all of this, having had all of these conversations that we've been engaging with, knowing this isn't the end, really, it's the end of this session, but we'll carry on in conversation. Just wanting to take a moment just to notice how you're doing now. And then I'll pass over to Alice for the close. Thanks, Catherine. Um, and before we kind of like just let all of that information settle, because we're doing a lot of talking um, and a lot of listening and thinking, uh, one of those last points brought up was really important and just like really, yeah, thinking about the role that migrant labour 
plays in our in our land system in our food system um and like how we can create a system that is really in solidarity with migrant uh, laborers um and and thinking about that how that works into our our theory of change and and looking at those root causes and those issues of justice and colonialism around land um in the present day so not just considering who owns the land here but also who works the land and how does that you know operate on a global scale so that was a last little little thing to to kind of absorb um and now we're going to try and just like let everything settle before we finish so if you want to if you feel comfortable closing your eyes then do um if not then just uh, stay with your eyes open and just take a few deep breaths you might want to tune into your body resting against the chair or wherever you're sitting or standing feel the contact points and pressure perhaps your feet against the floor your hands in your lap and just see if you can let your shoulders and the muscles in your face relax. We've been doing a lot of talking and listening and thinking about really challenging things and the mind might be whizzing um, around. So your mind may still be focused on something that you've just heard or been discussing, but I really invite you to just try and loosen and broaden your attention and notice how it relaxes as you relax your body, how it opens up as you open up your body. And then see if you can feel yourself open to all that has been part of this session over the last three hours that you've been with us for, all of the conversations, ideas, and thoughts, and imagine it just gently washing over you and gently swirling around you with no need to focus on any one bit of it. And then try and imagine all of this just settling down into your body so you can start to integrate it, digest it, embody it. And the ways in which theories of change show up in your work and your lives might not be immediate and might not be obvious but allow yourself to trust that this is one piece in a continual learning, one seed to nurture with your love and commitment to create social change and a seedling which will emerge and grow when the time is right. And saying that, I'm just gonna invite you to think about one way in which you can see yourself taking this forward. Whether it's reading more about theories of change discussing it with a friend at dinner, holding a meeting at work, perhaps continuing to be part of the process as so many people have already given their email addresses um, to, to be part of the process of shared assets and lion. It doesn't need to be big and there's no need to think too hard about it. Just see what first comes to mind, where you feel yourself drawn to as an area of action following this. Now bring your attention back to your body and take a few deep breaths again. On the out breath, letting everything just settle and ground. And then when you're ready to open your eyes, I'm gonna hand over to Christabel and Josina, who are gonna share a little bit about next steps for this work. Yeah, so thank you so much, Catherine and Alice, for holding that beautiful space. Um, like Alice said at the beginning, this was the, the first step in a longer process to think about and come up with a collective theory of change for, for land justice and um, cutting across different parts of the movement and 
building those relationships through this bit of work. Um, so thank you everyone who has dropped your, your name in the chat. What we will do is, because there's nothing fixed right now, um, we will keep you up to date with things coming up. Um, and there will be some other similar spaces like this, but we will reflect on, on how today's gone and, and base the next action on, on that or holding the next space on today. If you have got any suggestions though, please do email them because we would like this to be a participatory process. So any, any kind of feedback or suggestions that come to mind, please get in touch with us. I'll drop my email again into the chat. Thank you. Thanks, Christabel. Yeah, this is, it's gonna take a while for uh, whatever the next steps are to come together. Um, I'm about to go on a period of extended leaves so uh, Lion's End, it's not really going to happen very rapidly, um, but um, this has been a fantastic um, spark. And um, I imagine that whatever comes um, out this year will be um, just as dynamic and uh, thought provoking. So thank you very much for your participation today, everyone. <laughs>